Hey everybody, this is Lee from Okta, the Identity Access Management SaaS leader. Today, I wanna to show you a quick demo of how to use Okta to SAML in the Citrix. Now, I'm not gonna really gonna get into the benefits and the details of SAML here today. There's a lot of places on the internet that already do that. But what I wanna show you is I wanna show you what that experience and basic configuration looks like. Now, I'm gonna show you two types of demo flows today. I'm gonna demonstrate both IDP and SP initiated login flows. So let's start with an SP initiated login flow first. So as an example, as a user, I'm away from the office at a hotel, traveling, coffee shop. I'm somewhere outside in a way and I need to have access to Citrix. And normally what I would do is I would go to my company's Citrix login portal page on the internet to access and be able to log in and, and use my resources. Now, in this instance, my company has decided to use Okta to SAML that to, to improve that experience. And so you'll notice when I go to Netscale or Gateway to log in, it redirects me to Okta because my company's using Okta. And so I'll go ahead and, and log in. And in this case, I'm going to log in with my Active Directory credentials. Now, I could use local credentials based inside of Okta. Maybe I was a contractor or a partner and I didn't have Active Directory credentials inside this company's AD environment. Okta has the ability to also be able to house identities as well. But in this case, I'm actually going to use my company's login. So I'm going to log in with my Active Directory credentials. Now, one of the things that's going to happen is, so I'm going to get an additional prompt that's going to pop up. And what this is, is this is a multi-factor prompt that's popping up. Now, luckily for me, my company gives me a lot of choices to use with multi-factor options. Basically, my company decided that they wanted to make sure I am who I say I am, not just based on username and password. They want me to use an additional factor of authentication. And I have choices, everything from security questions, which are very secure, but for demonstration purposes, security questions, voice call authentication, texting, I can even do hardware UB keys, and I can do various software keys as well, from Google Authenticator to Okta Verify. And in this instance, I'm actually gonna show you guys Okta Verify. This is something that actually comes with Okta solution. And I'm actually going to bring over my phone so you guys can actually see that. So what happens is, in this case, I'm going to use push authentication. So I click the push button and my phone pops up and says, hey, I've got a notification that says it's me, where I'm coming from and what I'm trying to do. And in this case, I want to approve it. So I simply tap approve and it completes my login process. So now I'm logged in. And of course, it takes me to, as a user, what I would normally expect to see. I see my Citrix storefront page, I see my apps, I see my desktops, I see everything I need to have to be able to do what I normally do, and I can click and run my applications, and everything works as I would expect it to normally work. So that's SP initiated flow. So let me explain a little bit about what just happened here. So I'm gonna bring up this drawing. So here I am a user out on the internet, and basically I wanna access Citrix. So what's happening? What did I just do? So what I did was I opened up my browser and went out to my company's Citrix Netscaler portal site, which is great. Now, Netscaler is configured to do SAML authentication back to Octo. So it immediately redirects me back over and has me log in through my Octo portal page. Octo then logs me in, verifies, and validates me. In this case, it is validating me against Active Directory in this case it validates me, and then once I've been validated, it sends me back to Netscaler with a SAML assertion token that validates who I am. Netscaler accepts that SAML validation token and passes me into my Citrix environment where I then see storefront and I can access my applications. So that's the actual process flow of what actually happened in this case. Now, I mentioned there was an, an additional process flow. So let's talk about what it would look like to do an IDP or an ID initiated process flow. So in this instance, I'm actually gonna go directly to my company's Okta tenant. Again, I see a familiar login. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in here. 
And of course, when I do, it's gonna prompt me for multi-factor. So I'll send my push. I'll go ahead and accept that on my phone, off on the side here. And then that will continue and it'll log me in and give me access to the environment. Now what I see here is gonna be a little bit different. So what am I seeing? What I see is my company's Okta portal page, which gives me access to all my applications. So I'm seeing SaaS applications like Salesforce. I'm seeing Office 365 on here, Slack, ServiceNow for help desk tenants, Box to access files. I also see Citrix as well. So here, if I click this link, what I'm gonna see is something similar to what we just saw. Again, this uses SAML to authenticate and log me directly into Citrix. Now, what you may have noticed is that when I clicked on this link here, it took me straight into Citrix and didn't prompt me again. Why? Because Okta has already validated and verified who I am. So I can directly go to those resources and access them. And one of the interesting things we can do is we can also, instead of having to click to go to the storefront page, then go find my application and click it, I can directly call an application that's on my storefront page directly from my Okta portal page. And it'll immediately go in through and it'll immediately launch this application for me without me having to. If I had many applications on this list, it would automatically launch this application, bring it up and provide me access to it. As you can see here, here's my notepad. And if I go back, I'm able to do that both for applications and even for Zen app and Zen desktop desktops as well. This is IDP initiated workflow. So let's talk a little bit about what I just did here. So if I bring up my drawing again, what I did was is I went directly to Okta in this instance and I logged in and I got my portal page that showed me all of my applications. I chose the Citrix application and that made a SAML assertion call directly down to Netscaler to assert me in and provide me access into my Citrix environment. Very simple process workflow. So now let's talk a little bit about what's required to make this process flow work. So with the current configuration that I'm using, I'm gonna clear some of this back out again. Obviously I need Citrix, because if I don't have Citrix, I don't have anything to log into. I'm gonna need Netscaler either in the LAN or in the DMZ to do my SAML against Okta, and I'm gonna need an Okta tenant. Now in this instance, I'm also gonna need an additional component inside of Citrix, which is important, which is called Citrix FAS. Stands for Citrix Federated Authentication Service. Now this doesn't actually federate. What it does is it supports the ability to do federation by using Active Directory certificates to basically log in users with that certificate into their Citrix resources. Now this does require Citrix 7.9 or newer to be able to install and use Citrix FAS. But once you've configured Citrix FAS, it's very easy to integrate IDPs like Okta into this environment to both simplify and improve that security access flow for your users and even for external users. So if you need to bring in external third party users, you can also do that as well. Now from the Okta standpoint, there are no servers or anything else. Everything is hosted out inside of Okta. Okta is a service. There is one small component we call the Okta AD agent that does need to be installed in one of your servers in your environment. And this is just a very simple, small, lightweight agent that we install that allows Okta that if you want to be able to delegate its authentication from Okta to Active Directory. Outside of that, there are no, there are no MFA servers. There's nothing else that needs to be configured inside your network. Now, let's talk for a second, a minute about how you actually configure SAML authentication to Netscaler. And I'm gonna bring up my administrator portal for Okta. And I've already brought up my Netscaler SAML configuration application that I have configured. And inside of here, Okta provides you a very simple button that you click and will bring up all of the step-by-step -step instructions that you need to be able to do to configure it. So we walk you through going into Netscaler, going in and creating 
a SAML authentication server. We give you all the fields and information, including the certificate you need to download that you need to install and put in to make this work, as well as walking you through creating the policy for your SAML policy, and then binding that policy to your Netscaler Gateway VIP or virtual server that you're gonna to use to make that access. So we walk you through step-by-step step on how to make that configuration work. Very simple, very straightforward, and very easy. So I hope you enjoyed this demo. This is part one in a two-part series. In the second series that I'm going to do, I'm actually gonna show you how to use Okta to log in to Citrix if you don't have Citrix Fast. So if you're using a version other than 7.9 or you are not able to deploy Fast in your environment, I'm actually gonna show you how you can utilize Okta to provide SAML access into your Citrix environment. Thanks, have a great day.